good to see everyone today. Welcome the viewers online. Thanks for joining us. <sighs> Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You're so good. <laughs> You're so good. You're so good. Oh, wow. Yeah, it feels good up here. God, you're so good. Lord, I thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, for, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord. And, Lord, God, we thank you, Lord, for people who are watching on Yon, Lord. God, we command every sort of sickness, every sort of infirmity to go right now from people. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, where people have been under attack, that they will enter into a new realm today, Lord. I thank you for the higher levels, the greater levels, God, for what you want to release, Lord. I thank you, God, for what you're preparing and what you're stewing in this season, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for what you want to release today, Lord. I thank you for your power and your presence, God. Lord, we're not just here for another sermon. We are here to encounter the one who changes lives, who makes who makes broken whore, who makes people who are sick healed. And Lord, I thank you for the authority, Lord, the authority, Lord, even my doubts of a government of God. I thank you, Lord, that it will be established, Lord, in this region, Lord. We thank you for the government of God, Lord. Lord, we thank you for what you want to do. Holy Spirit, I thank you, Lord. For what you want to release. I thank you for the new ideas. I thank you for the creativity, Lord, that you showed me, Lord. I thank you, God, for giving people, Lord, even this room, God ideas to stoke, God. Lord, we want to be motivated by your spirit, God. Because it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by your spirit, God. It's not by my own strength. It is what you want to do. And Lord, I thank you today, Lord, that the, that the, the obstacles, Lord, that have been in the way, that have been pressing people will be broken. I thank you for the mindsets, Lord, the mindsets that have held people back, Lord, that today there will be a fresh revelation, a fresh insight into what you want to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. That was good. Oh, I mean, you're just stored up today. Can you tell? This might be a different message, but that's okay. <sighs> so, sorry, I'm just. This phrase has been in my mind the past few days. It's time to go higher. All right, and I'm like, okay, Lord. Time to go higher. That's great. We want to go higher. And last night, this is what the Lord spoke to me. We are entering a time and a season where God is removing mindsets that are going to inhibit growth for when we enter the promised land. This is a time where I'm dismantling the old so I can bring in the new. There is a fence and people are going to either end up in the old or they are going to embrace the new wineskin that I am pouring out. I am bringing fresh vision to people that seek for the old for this next season that we are entering in. And this is going to require a new lens. Don't expect things to slow down for there is a lot of work to do. This is a time of preparation and how you choose to fix your heart in this season will determine your level of influence in the next season. My kingdom is not stopping. Don't be consumed by the circumstances for I'm coming to do what I said I would do. Don't allow this time of testing to make you grow weary, but allow my hand to strengthen you in this hour. For I am preparing a people that they will know that I am the Lord and that today I perform signs, wonders, and miracles in the earth. So you might be asking, why, why is he so fired up today? What, what happened? You know, when you start getting God's perspective, when you start seeking, when you start pressing in, right, when that happens, you start seeing things a whole different way. I feel like and you like, we are in some very critical times. We are. And I, I'm not going to mitigate the stuff going on in society and what's happening and what's going to do. But my God is the God of the impossible. My God is the God of the impossible. 
We said it today, too good to not believe. So, there's this invitation that I feel God is saying, is I want my people to partner with me to see the impossible become possible. We, this, is not, this is not a time for will. We, like, we cannot be motivated by feel in this hour. Because if you're motivated by feel, you will miss the vision. You will miss what God is saying. You will miss what He is doing. Why? Because feel is, tries to rob people. It tries to steal. And it tries to take away. And as believers, we have authority. You talked about that. We have authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. So if that's the case, then it's time. It's time to be like, hey, this stuff happening. No, this, this is not, no, this is not okay with me. Look, 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 look at what the Bible says. Look at what the Bible says. So this is not okay. So this circumstance, this is not okay. Why? Because I'm called to give them a higher reality. Sure, you can choose to dabble in this inferior reality called the earth. And, like, and, and, and what I mean by that is you can choose to operate by the yards of the land like, when, when sickness comes in this study. Like, it's like this. Or you can choose to uh, abide in the supernatural power of God and be like, Lord, I have an assignment and anything standing in my way has to bow because I am focused on accomplishing this assignment. It's about having vision in this owl. That's what we need. But this is what the Lord was telling me. And, I, and this is so important. He said, I am removing things that are inhibiting my vision, that are inhibiting what the downwards I want to release to my people. I'm removing those things so I can go in. Why? Because it's old, it's old wineskin. I, I don't want to talk bad about moves of the Spirit, but I have, I've, I've, I've heard people say that when a move of the Spirit happens, and it's great when the next move happens, the people that were on the past move of the Spirit persecute the new move. Why? Because God comes differently. And I feel that God is wanting to do a new move. He's wanting to do a new move. And it's my job to be ready for what He wants to say. It's not about even me. If I hear what He says to me, it's not... I, the, there can't be an opinion. So if he speaks to me and says, I want to do this, and I'm like, God, I don't know if I want to do I don't know if that's I don't know if that's the way I would do it. <laughs> what does that say? It tells me there was something in me that needs to change because he, 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 he knows it all. And so he's got the best plan. He's got the best perspective. So if you don't like what God is doing this how, you better change your mindset because he's still going to do what he wants to do. And it's your choice to jump on board if you want to be a part of it. God is not... It's not about him. And he loves to, he loves to co-able with us. But he is not waiting for you and I to jump the ship and be like, okay, guys, I, I'm ready. No, his kingdom is always advancing. And I can choose right now to jump on board or I'm going to miss what God wants to do. We're going to read a passage of Scripture just to make this kind of biblical so people understand that I'm not just saying stuff. Okay, Numbers chapter 13, verse 2. This, Numbers chapter 13, verse 2. 
I, I actually really like this story, and I've been reading it a lot lately. So, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send for yourself men, so that they may spy out the land of Canaan, which I am going to give to the sons of Israel. You shall send a man from each of their father's tribes, every one a Yido among them. So, so what's happening? The Lord has spoken to Moses and said, Moses, I want you to send out a bunch of spies, and they're going to spy out this land. And so they send out a whole bunch of... Like, keep, so if we go to actually verse um, 25, we're going to jump down and talk about the tribes and different stuff, what we missed. Oh, no, wait, we'll go to verse 17. When Moses sent them spied out the land of Canaan, he said to them, go up there into the, into the Negev, then go up into the hill country. See what the land is like, and what are the people who live in it are strong or weak? Whether they are few or many, how is the land in which they live? Is it good or bad? And how are the cities in which they live? Are they like open camps or are they fortified? How is the land? Is it fat or lean? Are there trees in it or not? Make an effort then to get some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was, now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. And so why is this important? Would, would these are the instructions of what Moses has sent these 12 tribes to do. And so let's, let's go to, down to verse 25. When they returned from spying out the land at the end of 40 days, they proceeded to Moses and Aaron to all the congregation of the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Peron at Kadesh. And they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Okay, so they did what they said, showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told them and said, We went into the land where you sent us, and it showed you does feel with milk and honey. So that's important because if you remember back, Context, Exodus, when, when God spoke to Moses, he said that I'm going to give you a yam fiong with milk and honey. And so that's, that's important. No, the yes, the people who live in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. And moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Amalek is living in the land of Negev, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amalekites are living in the hill country. The Canaanites are living by the sea, and by the side of the Jordan. Verse 30. Then Caleb cried with people before Moses and said, We should by all means go up and take possession of it, for we will surely go, for we will surely overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are too strong for us. So they gave out to the sons of Israel a bad report of the yand, which they spied out, saying, The yand through which we have gone and spying out is a yand that the vows and inhabitants and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great size. Great size. There also we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, are part of the Nephilim, and we become a grasshop, grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Fascinating passage of Scripture. Verse 2. Send for yourself men, so that they may spy out the land of Canaan, in which I am going to give to the sons of Israel. Okay. When, when, when I read this story, one thing that, one thing that I've, I, I think is just so important to recognize is that it said, I'm going to give this year to you. So it's already been decided. There is no, so yes, you're spying out the end. Yes, you're going to see if it's great. You're going to see if it's fortified. But I'm going to give this to you. Right. My dad was talking about the renewed mind and how important it is. You know why it's so important to have a renewed mind? Because if you don't have a renewed mind going into your promised land, you're not going to get there. These ten spies, even proposed that they had, they had an old mindset and they did not recognize that, they, that God was going to give it into their hand. 
And guess what? What they said was true. It was great. It was strong. It was fortified. But it had been given into their hand. So if I give, if I give you something, if I, let's say this, if my dad says to me, I'm going to give you something, it may be, it may be difficult to attain and, well, actually no, scratch that example, I don't need that, I need to say it a better way. We have prophetic promises over our life. We have words over our life. You should anyway. If you don't, come to me and I'll give you one. And so when you get a prophetic word, what is it? It is God speaking. This is what I am going to do. And so, when, one of the things I love... It talks about that we need to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Because if I'm not transformed by the renewing of the mind, I am not going to be able to see and fight for, for when I see opposition coming against what's going on. I am convinced that one of the reasons why we have seen, we have the, why this Whatever has happened, this COVID-19 stuff has happened, is because the enemy knew that if the church and the people of God we really grabbed onto something, that they were going to see the greatest move of God yet. And he's tried to stop it. He's tried to delay it. He's tried to send feel. He's tried to divide people. He's tried to do all this stuff. And God is looking at people to say, God is looking for people to see that Joshua and Caleb is looking to see this perspective and say, hey, God said we're going to take this. And so if he said it, it's going to happen. It's not going to matter how fortified. It's not going to matter how strong. I don't care if a grasshopper was in our sight. The Lord said he would do this. And so if the Lord speaks, that means the resources will come. If he really spoke and he said, I want you to do this, your job is to be obedient and anything impossible is up to him. It's not about our own strength. And unfortunately, what's happened in the church is that the church has tried to figure out this intellectual thing where we try and rationalize how can we have these good meetings and we have these standards of how we should do church instead of being like, God, we need your power, we need your presence, we need your anointing to bust through, because Lord, you gave me an assignment. You planted me here. And so if you planted me here, I'm going through. You know, you want to know the real, the real deal, sports? Let's talk about sports. If you have a sports team, and I have sports, so I'm using sports, so I hope you understand. But sports teams... If someone gets injured, guess what happens? Next man up. If a whole, if four of the best people get injured, guess what? Next man up. There's no backing down. There's no back. It's why Prof- professional league and people like guess what? They give excuses, being like, "Hey," like, and we sometimes I think we should, get me. I'm getting ahead of myself. These sports teams they get injured, and guess what? Next man up. I don't hear the coach saying, well, we asked this guy, and we asked this guy, and this is not what's doing well. No. We all, we're called, we're, we're going to win. We're focused. We all, these NHL, they, these NHL hockey teams, what, what they do is they compete for the Stanley Cup, the, the grand prize, and so everyone's goal is to get there. It doesn't matter. Excuses or not, there's no, there's no secondary rules for, hey, if someone gets injured, we're going to give you an advantage to help you win. But I think that sometimes happens in the church.
we still giving, we still, we still rationalizing. God will speak and we're going through something and we start rationalizing in our mind why this actually might not work out because of this circumstance and this what's going on. And we try and, and we try and do a God assignment intellectually when it's impossible. So, time, okay. I just don't want to go, well. Okay, how much time do I have? <clears throat> and so I think my, my point was, my point basically is, it didn't matter what the 10 spies saw. They were told that they were going to give, be given this end. It does not mean that what they saw and what they heard was not validated. But when my feelings and what I see goes above the word and truth of God, I become deceived. And not only do I become deceived, I actually end up delaying or canceling what God had on my life. That's just what happened. Don't. I know this is kind of like a tough word, but I feel like it's really good. So. Um, so yeah, let's go. Let's keep reading. Uh, Numbers chapter fourteen. All the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, "Would that we have died in the land of Egypt, or would that we have died in the wilderness?" Why is the Lord bringing us into the sea and fall by the sword? Our wives and our yellow ones will become plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Mm. Okay, some context. These are people that saw the works, the, saw the signs and wonders, manna falling from heaven, quail coming. They saw the miracles of God. They were exposed. They were exposed to the supernatural power of God. And what is their response? Why, why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become plunder. Wouldn't that be better for us to return to Egypt? Ooh. Wouldn't that be better for us to return to e Egypt? So your belief system, it's, 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 let's look at this for a sec. So their belief system is because of what people, are, what we have seen and heard, because of my experience, th this is what I believe. And it makes sense, our belief system. So what is a belief system? Well, your belief system is made up of your experiences. Let me give an example. If I believe chocolate is really good, and I say chocolate is amazing, What's happened? Well, I've probably partaked a thing of chocolate and I've had a memory that said this was really good for me. Something's, yeah? And so, the, the thing with this is, these people were exposed to the supernatural. So, they became exposed to something, and so they actually had a responsibility to actually believe. They had no excuse to not say, no, the Lord is going to give this to us. We have seen. He delivered us from Egypt. It was impossible. What happened? They forgot. They actually forgot. They became so narrow-minded, being like, look at my circumstance right now. It looks like it's over. I'm going to tie this up because I feel like I need to give you a more. So Romans chapter 8, no, 12, sorry. I'm going to spend a few minutes in Romans and then wrap this up. So I'm going to read two scriptures. You don't have to turn there. 
And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. But be transformed by renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is. So what is the will of God? Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. That's the will of God. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What, is, what does the renewed mind do? Why is the renewed mind so powerful? Because when I have a renewed mind, I can actually see, I, I can see stuff, I can see heaven coming down to earth. Because that, that's our assignment, is to see heaven come down to earth. We have been stewards of this earth, and we are called to bring what we see in heaven, because we're a citizen of heaven, and bring it down to earth. That's our responsibility. There were only two of the ten spies that actually grabbed hold of, this is what the Lord is wanting to do. You know, I propose that that word about Moses, the for of milk and honey, you don't think that went around the whole tribe? You don't think that was talked about when they, were, when they were doing the great and mighty acts of the Lord? These people were wandering from a place they, they, were, they were supposed to get the promised land. So, so they should have known. They should have known to actually get, they should have known that this is what God had for them. Why is this important? We have to know the word of God over our life. If I don't know the word of God over my life, I, if something happens that tries to oppose, if something tries to bump up in the way and says, I don't know the word of God, then, then I won't stand. Why? Because I've not allowed what God has spoke to me to sink in and become part of me. And it's like, guess what? It's not about, it's not about what the word is. It's not about how good you are. So it's like, no, it doesn't matter. Like if you're called to do, I don't care about that. This is what God says. This is what God says over you. So it's like, well, it's not, it's not about you. It's about you being a conductor to seeing heaven invade earth. When that becomes your focus, that's when God starts trusting you. Why? Because it's not about you anymore. It's about seeing his kingdom. I am part of the, I am part of the kingdom of God. You know, it's, we are sent. We are sent as, like, we are here to demolish the works of darkness. And so, I am not... Why am I not motivated by fear? Because I am on, I am on the offense. I am with a higher power. I am with a higher reality. It doesn't matter what the enemy force my way. Guess what? I have angels. I have supernatural all around me. And when that becomes your focus, it doesn't matter what is sent against you. You're like, guess what? I might be going for a hard time, but I'm going to get through. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to bust through. And when that becomes your mindset, you have a transformed life. You can't just say you're going to do something. No, you have to be focused and honed in. You can't just say, hey, I am going to do a business. Because guess what? If you say, hey, I'm going to do a business, and you don't have the mindset, you don't have the entrepreneurial mindset saying, this is going to be successful, this is what's going on, you're going to see something, you're going to have opposition come against you, and probably you're going to give up. Why? Because you've not allowed that thing you not allow that passion within you to come out. Why am I so passionate about this? Why is this so important? Because I feel in this hour, we are called to stand. I am called to stand my ground. I am called to stand on truth. I am called to not conform to this word. I am called to just stand. It doesn't matter what's happening. It doesn't matter what people think about me. It doesn't matter what this person says. Because guess what? The truth is going to be revealed. The truth exposed the eyes. And so the enemy will try and throw things at you, will try and distract you in the season, because he wants to get your mind focused off the vision. What is the call? What is your assignment in this season? When that becomes a primary focus, you are unstoppable. Why? 
Because it's not about you. It's about knowing that you're sent for the one who sent you. If we become approved by man, if we want men's approval, then I guess men sent us. But if God calls you, then you're sent by him. But, but you have to know that. Because I, I tell you what, if you don't know it, the enemy knows it. The enemy might know your destiny better than you. That's why he throws things at you. If he knew what you could, if you knew what the enemy knew, if some people actually knew what the enemy knew, they would walk in a whole lot more confidence. They would walk in a whole lot more, guess what? I'm just going to go for it. Because the enemy knows that if you know who you are, you're going to do some damage to his kingdom. If the church we really knew who they were, COVID, this whole thing wouldn't matter. The whole plan would be, guess what? We're going forward. When the enemy attacks you, guess what? He's paid his hand and it says, hey, you're attacking this. This is valuable. Thanks for telling me this enemy. You're going to pay. Joe, you're talking way too intense. No, I'm not. I'm not talking too intense. You wanna know why? Because I know what the enemy is trying to do. I know that he's trying to throw offense. I know that he's trying to divide things. And guess what? It, no. Distraction. It's too petty. You know what? When you when you're in a war, when you're in a war and you're fighting an enemy, offense doesn't matter. The stuff doesn't matter. Guess what matters? Your target. What's going on? I'm sure a sniper is not thinking, oh, this person offended me when he has to shoot. No, he's focused on his target, knowing he has to get it because he has an assignment. And, and, and I, will be, I will believe that what is happening right now is we are seeing the new wine skin expand and we're gonna see it hot, we're gonna see it unfold. And guess what? It's gonna look way different than what people thought. It is gonna involve people that people have condemned, that the world has condemned, and God has said, I they have a call in their life with a church, accept them with a church, bring them in, or a church gonna use the rejected, the broken, the people that are hurting. Are they, can they see their destiny? This is not about one man or woman. This is about, a, this is about seeing the kingdom of God established on earth. Why, why am I saying this right now? Because if we don't get this way, if the church does not get this way, we will miss what God wants to do. It is time for us to take responsibility. I am not trying to say if you've gone through something, it's not important. I'm not saying your feelings are invalid. I just know that we are in such critical times right now and we can't allow the things that have distracted us in this season to distract us in this upcoming season because it's time to prepare. And you can't prepare properly if your mindset is not focused on what God is wanting to do. Because we have to be a people that heal the Lord now. We can't be relying on the past thing, but we got to make sure ears are on to now so I can step into what he has for me. So when he says move, I move. Because guess what? If I move too late, I might miss an opportunity. I might miss a divine thing. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for, thank you, God, for that there's a bunch of Joshua's and Caleb's in this room. And Lord, I thank you that you are removing, that you are removing. And if God, if God removes, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that he wants to remove. He just, he doesn't want to remove stuff, but he, like, he doesn't want, like, if, he does not want to move, remove people. But if people are not going to surrender and jump on board that he wants to do, then they have to move. They have to get out of the way. Oh. 
Sometimes we have to get out of the way. Sometimes what's happening is that we've had our experiences. We've had stuff. We've had, we've had, we've had, um, We've yet feel, we've yet anxiety, we've yet worry come in because of our experiences. We've had bad experiences. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying if you've had a bad experience, I'm sure it sucks. And, and, and you can get healed from that. There's, 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 there's many tools and you can get healed. But guess what? I feel God saying, hey, it is time. It is time to just stop to just stop allowing, to stop spiritualizing your dysfunction and jumping on board and going into what I have for you. So, Lord, I, Lord, I, I, I said to myself, Lord, if I've become offended, if I've become bitter at anyone, Lord, please remove it. Because, Lord, I want to be all into what you have to do. I don't want anything to distract me from what you want to do, Lord. And, Lord, I thank the people, Lord, for just... You're, that you're breaking things off, that you're just, you bring in the new wineskin. Thank you, God, for the new wineskin. Thank you for the church. Thank you to have a church, church's vision. The corporate church's vision expands to see what you want, what you want. And thank you, Lord, for what, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you have given us power and authority. So Lord, I thank you right now, Lord, that people will recognize right now the power and authority. I thank you, God, for that people will go into their workplaces, they will go into their house knowing who they are. Lord, I thank you that we want to be the people like Joshua and Caleb. We don't want to be the people that missed out on what, what they want to do, missed out on what you want to do because we had an old mindset, because we allowed things from this, we allowed things from this realm to distract what you want to do. I thank you, Lord, yeah, that you're moving. That you're breathing, God. Lord, I thank you, God, for the dry bones, Lord, in people's lives, Lord, to be resurrected right now. That you will speak, Lord, that you will speak, Lord, things. Will, will you feel destructive? Will you feel disappointed and you'll yell at something and die? God is going to resurrect something within you because it's part of the call. Maybe you said, I don't want this call. If you did, if you did, you can repent right now because it's about the call. It, we don't get to choose what he wants to do for us. We, we do, but it's not about, we need everyone. We need all hands on deck. So whatever God has asked you to do, it is significant. The enemy wants to make you feel your assignment in this season is insignificant and it's not. We need every member of the body. Every member of the body. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that Lord, when people have felt broken, when people have felt disappointed, when people have just, you know, I thank for strength and your love to go in and sink in. Yeah. And, Lord, I thank God for imparting fresh vision. That's what you told me. He's imparting fresh vision. That as we yet go, as we yet go of people's opinions, as we yet go of what people think about us, as we yet go of what someone said and it's affected us, as we yet it go, He is giving us fresh vision. He is becoming that voice. And so you'll be thank you that this church operates from fair heaven. That this church moves, you have moves in the third heaven, Lord. That when you speak, we move. It doesn't matter what's happening in the natural. It doesn't matter what the government's saying. That we move by your spirit. And Lord, I thank you that you are bringing the resources of heaven to this place. That you are bringing a new creativity like you've never seen it. I thank you for songs, Lord, that have yet to be written in this house that are going to transform that are going to transform society, that's going to transform Muskoka. I thank you, God, for the workers and the people, God, that you're going to bring in. Why? Because they had a dream, they had a vision, and said, I have to come here. It doesn't matter. But I felt something of in, and God's saying, go, and they went. I thank you, that people, that this place is a beacon for heaven in this season. That we don't wait to say yes, that we say yes now, whatever, whatever it looks like that I say yes, whatever you're saying in this season.
Because I know you want to go through and you want to do something powerful. I don't, have, I don't even have to figure it out. You want to do something. And so you're, I surrender my ideas. I surrender my opinions. I surrender your how this is going to look. And I say, Lord, birth in me is something to change the world. Amen.